Hello friends, welcome back. In the previous tutorials, we understood that a process of arriving at an efficient solution to the given problem is known as problem solving. To solve problems using computers, we need to follow some well-defined and precise steps. First, we need to understand and analyze the problem carefully. Then, design various solutions by using an appropriate problem solving tool. Algorithm is one of the problem solving tool which help us to design solutions. In the previous tutorial, we understood that algorithm is a step by step set of precise and well defined instructions. Algorithm is written using a natural language statements. We understood various characteristics of a good algorithm. A good algorithm should be definite, correct, finite and efficient. As we know that algorithms can be easily translated to a pseudocode, pseudocode is also one of the problem solving tool. Algorithms contain natural language statements, well defined precise natural language statements. Whereas if you come to pseudocode, pseudocode contains natural language and programming language words and phrases. Pseudocode won't contain natural language statements. Instead of statements, it contains words and phrases. Pseudo means false. Hence, pseudocode is not an actual code. Pseudocode is a false code. Instead of statements or instructions, pseudocode consists of words and phrases. That makes pseudocode to look quite similar to program but not a program. Pseudocode is similar to a program but not a program. Pseudocodes are written with respect to programming language. Hence, a pseudocode may be different with respect to different programming language. But programming language syntax or grammar is not strictly followed while writing a pseudocode. Pseudocode is a minimized version of an algorithm. It is neither an algorithm nor a program. As pseudocode is not an actual code, we cannot compile and execute the pseudocode, but programs can be compiled and executed. In the previous tutorial, we understood how to write an algorithm to solve a problem of finding sum of two numbers 10 and 10. We have written well defined and precise instruction which we can interpret step by step. As we know that pseudocodes are written with respect to a programming language, the pseudocode might look different with respect to different programming languages. Here we have a pseudocode for sum of given two numbers 10 and 10. With respect to basic programming language, the pseudocode might look something like this. Here we have start. To indicate the start of the pseudocode, we can use the begin keyword or the start keyword. Then we have declare a variable num1. With respect to basic programming language, we can write dim num1. Dim is a keyword in a basic programming language that is used to declare a variable or define memory. So dim num1, then declare a variable num2. Here we write define a memory num2. Declare variable sum. Here we write dim sum that indicates define a memory called as sum. So you can see that in basic programming language, we use a dim keyword. Then you can see assign value 10 to variable num1. Here we write num1 equal to 10. Assign value 10 to variable num2. Here we write num2 equal to 10. Add value in num1 and num2 and assign the result to variable sum. Here we have sum equal to num1 plus num2. We are just translating an algorithm to a pseudocode with respect to a programming language. Display sum. We can write here print sum also. We use display or write keyword to display something. Even we can use the print keyword also which is available in the basic programming language. There is no strict rule is followed to write a pseudocode. The pseudocode must be intuitive with respect to programming language. That is enough. Once the pseudocode is written, that pseudocode is translated to a program with respect to a programming language and that program is going to be compiled and executed. So here we have a basic program written. In basic program, we can convert a pseudocode 
to a basic program something like this begin in basic program we write the step number then we write the statement so begin we have written dim num1 here we have written 20 dim num1 as a integer that indicates define num1 which can be able to hold an integer value next we translate dim num2 to a programming language statement 30 dim num2 as a integer that indicates define a memory location called as num2 which can hold an integer value then dim sum we write 40 you can see the steps are in an incremental order step numbers dim sum as an integer that indicates define a memory location called as sum which can be able to hold an integer value then num1 equal to 10 can be translated to 50 let num1 equal to 10 here we are following the syntax of the programming language then num2 equal to 10 60 let num2 equal to 10 sum equal to num1 plus num2 here we write 70 let sum equal to num1 plus num2 display sum can be written as 80 print sum in the basic programming language end 90 end this is the program with respect to a basic programming language and which can be compiled and executed you can see that first we write the algorithm then we can translate it to a pseudocode then we can translate the pseudocode to a program which can be compiled and execute, executed pseudocode cannot be compiled and executed it just look similar to a program with respect to a programming language as we know that pseudocodes are written with respect to a programming language like with respect to C programming language a pseudocode might look something like this with respect to C++ programming language a pseudocode might be written something like this with respect to C sharp program a pseudocode might be written something like this with respect to Java programming language a pseudocode might look something like this with respect to a JavaScript programming language a pseudocode might look something like this with respect to action script a pseudocode might look something like this to solve a same specific problem once the pseudocode is written we can translate that pseudocode to a specific programming language you can see here we define a memory location called as num1 in basic programming language by writing a statement like this dim num1 as an integer if you come to C programming language we write int num1 that indicates declare a variable called as num1 which can be able to hold an integer value int num1 semicolon int num2 semicolon int sum semicolon num1 equal to 10 num2 equal to 10 semicolon sum equal to num1 plus num2 semicolon print the value of sum semicolon this is how we write a program in a C programming language to solve a problem of finding sum of two numbers 10 and 10 in C++ we write something like this in C sharp programming language we write the program something like this in Java programming language we write the program something like this in JavaScript programming language we write the program something like this in action script programming language we write the program something like this if you observe carefully the logic of solving a problem or a procedure to solve a problem is same whereas the way of writing the code with respect to a programming language is different as a programmer it is our responsibility to learn various algorithms once you learn the algorithm all you need is translate that algorithm to a program with respect to the programming language by learning the programming language itself so learning the logic is most important in a programmer's life because the algorithms or procedure to solve a problem will not be different whereas the way of writing the pseudocode or a program with respect to a programming language will be different uh, hope you guys have understood the importance of learning algorithms or procedure to write or solving a problem or the importance of learning how to design algorithms let's discuss now what are the benefits of pseudocode as it contains natural language words and phrases you can see here pseudocode won't contain complete statements they contain words and phrases they are easy to write 
easy to understand and modify. Pseudocodes are pre-plans. They help us to debug, check for correctness and efficiency before writing the program itself. Pseudocodes can be easily translated to flowcharts, then to a program, or we can directly translate a pseudocode to a program. Let's discuss limitations of pseudocode. Pseudocode is written with respect to a programming language. Hence, one pseudocode may be different from other pseudocode. You can see here a pseudocode for solving a problem of finding sum of two given numbers that is 10 and 10 might look like this start var num1 var num2 var sum num1 equal to 10 num2 equal to 10 sum equal to num1 plus num2 write sum stop the same pseudocode is different with respect to another programming language in java programming language the pseudocode might look something like this start int num1 int num2 int sum num1 equal to 10 num2 equal to 10 sum equal to num1 plus num2 print sum stop so pseudocodes will be different with respect to programming languages pseudocode cannot be run but program can be compiled and run or executed pseudocode has no visual representation like flowcharts so it is less uh, intuitive you can say hope you guys have understood what is a pseudocode and how do we write a pseudocode pseudocode is not an actual code it is a false code it is quite similar to a program pseudocode is a minimized version of an algorithm begin or a start keyword is used to indicate the beginning of the pseudocode end or a stop keyword are used to indicate the end of the pseudocode display write or a print keywords are used to display some value and pseudocodes contain words and phrases instead of instructions pseudocodes are more nearer to programming language hence pseudocodes will be different with respect to different programming language pseudocodes can be directly converted to a program which can be compiled and executed later so for this tutorial this much is enough friends in the next tutorial we discuss about the flowcharts how they are beneficial and how we write the flowcharts and how they are intuitive so for more benefits please subscribe and don't forget to like comment and share the videos with others so that everyone will get benefited keep learning keep coding keep sharing see you in the next tutorial thank you guys thank you very much